Welcome to the first annual Distro Delvi Award Show. This was suggested by a viewer during a live stream, so thank you very much for the idea. And the name of the show, which is a homage to the Dundies from the US version of The Office. Now I've reviewed a lot of distros this year, and most of the awards are based on feature episodes rather than live streams. In the future, I might do a semi-annual Delvey Award show because I can already tell this is going to be a lot of fun and you guys are really going to love it. And with that, here we go. Most surprising, Bodhi Linux. I don't even know where to begin with this one. Just watch the episode and you'll see why it's so surprising. It's based on Ubuntu, uses components from Mint, uses its own desktop environment. It got the highest FPS scores of all of the distros reviewed by a healthy amount, is actively developed and maintained, and hardly anybody knows about it, let alone uses it. This is a distro I definitely want to do live because there's still so much I don't know about it and it would be super fun to do it with you guys. And for that reason, I'm giving it the most surprising Delvey Award. Most unbreakable, Garuda Linux. Of course, if you caught the live stream, then you saw just how comically unbreakable this distro is. Now, I'm pretty sure that I just wasn't using the right payloads to destroy it, but still it seemed like no matter what we tried on stream, we could not bring this sucker down. Was it repairing itself on the fly? Was it restoring BTRFS snapshots after each reboot? No idea. Seemed like black magic to me, and that's why I'm giving Garuda Linux the most unbreakable Delphi. Most overrated? Fedora Silverblue. Now when I did this review, everyone was talking about how Silverblue would completely change the Linux desktop landscape forever. And virtually every Linux YouTuber had done a video on Silverblue, and many of them echoed the exact same thing. The problem is that Fedora Silverblue is just fine. That's it. It's not really great or anything earth shattering. It uses an immutable file system based on Flatpak and OS tree, which works surprisingly well. But the thing is, Endless OS is doing that too, and nobody really talks about them. Silverblue also has container tools and toolbox, which is cool, but that doesn't really matter to the average Linux user. Now between that and all of Linux YouTube talking up how awesome Silverblue is or was, nobody really talks much about it anymore, that's why I'm giving it the most overrated Delphi. Worst branding, Peppermint OS. Now I was pleasantly surprised at just how cool Peppermint OS was. It's super lightweight, has its own tools and special sauce, but the branding just isn't good. For starters, Pepper Mint? The distro isn't even based on Linux Mint, and the logo is just way too similar to the Umbrella Corporation logo from Resident Evil, which is a very popular logo if you're familiar with the massive Resident Evil franchise. And the thing is, Peppermint is actually really good, especially for low-spec hardware, but you wouldn't get that from the name, logo, or even the way the desktop is styled or anything really. And for that, I'm giving Peppermint OS the worst branding Delphi. Freshest, Bunsen Labs Lithium. After reviewing 40 plus Linux distros, they all just start to blend together. I've talked about this before. Everyone uses GNOME or KDE with the occasional XFCE or Cinnamon or Matei's tossed in. But then here comes Bunsen Labs with its very own Frankenstein desktop. Part CLI, part tiling, part XFCE. Bunsen Labs desktop is super unique and to me, surprisingly usable. I was especially surprised that after seeing the same desktop over and over and over again that Bunsen Labs comes along and does something completely different with the same set of tools. And that's why I'm giving Bunsen Labs Lithium the freshest Delvey award. Worst distro review, Open Mandriva. I really dropped the ball on this one. It didn't want to work on my hardware and I was still pretty early in distro delves that I hadn't seen a lot of hardware issues. So I passed it off as a problem with the distro. 
And maybe it was, but that does not excuse my lack of research going into it. Mandrake-based distros are a little weird, and I feel like Open Mandriva unfairly got the bad end of the stick here. We will for sure revisit it live so that it can get a proper review on the show, and because of that, I'm going to give it and myself the worst distro review Delvi. Blandest Linux distro. Linux Mint. Now remember that bland doesn't necessarily mean bad, and in fact it could be a good thing, but Linux Mint always surprises me at just how bland it can be even when you change the colors and cinnamon or install some applets. The desktop just doesn't look inviting, it doesn't make me want to use it. Mint has good tooling too, their software center, second to none, but for some reason that just doesn't fix the lack of seasoning and polish it has or doesn't have. And thus, I bestow upon Linux Mint the blandest of Delvi Awards. Most unknown. Haiku. Not a Linux distro or even related to Unix at all. The Haiku livestream was the most fun I've ever had on distro delves and it sets a very high bar for other streams to match. Not only was it an absolute blast, but for being a pretty much unknown open source operating system project, it was surprisingly capable. I would expect an unknown operating system to be falling apart at the seams due to lack of maintainers and whatever else, but Haiku is more put together than some Linux distros are. And with that, I have to award the most unknown OS Delvi to Haiku. Most toxic. Arch Linux, stemming from the Zen installer and Arco Linux reviews. I passed on Arch Linux proper because CLI installs just don't make good episodes and the Arch Linux community carries a strong reputation for being unwelcoming and elitist. A couple people had requested Arco Linux and the Zen installer, so I figured that maybe those would make a good substitute for installing actual Arch. I was wrong. I was eviscerated in the comments of the Zen Installer video, and even though I was a bit more prepared for the Arco Linux episode, I was taken aback at just how toxic the community could be. It is crazy to me how belligerent and hostile people can be over a piece of software. And that's why I give the Arch community in general the most toxic Delvi award. Bitchiest Delvi. MX Linux by a long shot. I had angry MX fans commenting on my videos across my channel for months after that review. And it wasn't even a bad review, I just wasn't super impressed with MX Linux. Compared to the Arco Linux and Zen Installer episodes where Arch fanboys would just let me have it on the day the episode was released, the MX Linux comments went on and on and some of the same people left comments on other videos talking about how awful my reviews were. The MX episode almost got the most toxic award, but the comments were really less toxic and more just, like, dumb. And that is why MX Linux gets the bitchiest Delvi award. And that makes for a total of 10 Delvi awards given out today. I hope that you enjoyed the Delvi Awards show as much as I did, and maybe next time we could do it live or as a podcast sort of thing because I'd love to have another person discuss these awards with. If you enjoy the channel and the show, consider becoming a patron or follow me on Twitter. And of course, like, comment, and subscribe, right? Hit the notification bell. I appreciate everybody's support, and thanks for watching.